This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's talk about something else that has getting a little bit of press 10 years ago. Kevin Nash does an interview and, and perhaps he's referencing the Nexus angle, but he says something along the lines of it takes seven years before you can get over and draw money. And Meltzer even reports that he called the WWE youth movement, what they're doing here with the Nexus and pushing the young guys. Kevin Nash says that's a mistake. Chris Jericho does another interview and totally disagrees with what Kevin Nash said. And says, no, it only takes six or seven months to get over maybe. And even blast Kevin Nash for being short-sighted. It's funny that this comes up now because I don't know, maybe two weeks ago, I had a conversation with Eric Bischoff, maybe a little longer than that about, um, how long it takes to get over. And he thought it took eight years. You gotta be on TV. You gotta be established. You gotta be on top for eight years. And then you can really draw money. And of course you have to then dig in and say, well, how do you define drawing money? And we cited some different exceptions. Of course, there are exceptions. Uh, Roman reigns perhaps is an exception. John Cena perhaps is an exception. Of course, the rock and Goldberg are exceptions, but I'm curious your take. Do you think there is sort of a, a general rule of thumb for how long an audience has to be acquainted with you and familiar with you before you're, uh, over and drawing money, quote unquote. Well, this is what I always uh, tell people, and this was my experience of the time that that I was coming up in the business from 82 on. In those days, I feel like it took you about five years, So, and that's 300-plus days a year now, mind you, uh, to learn the business from, from, I'm talking about from, coming out of nowhere, no knowledge, anything, no training, none of the above, not being second generation or third generation wrestler, none of those things figured in for a lay person walking in off the street. I felt like it was about, you know, 1500 matches. And that was with a lot of variables go into that. When did you first start getting to do promos? How were you used in those first five years? Did you start off your first territory or your second territory or your third territory working underneath? Where were you positioned, you know, after that inaugural, you know, because back then there weren't necessarily wrestling schools. You know, you might have got trained by an individual guy uh, that had access to a ring. Maybe like myself, you had about eight workouts, maybe 10 at the most. And you were thrown out there into the uh, lion's den and you learned on the job. Um, how many, how much opportunity did you have to do promos, local promos? Uh, like I said, were you used in territories to where like, you know, the one thing about Bill Watts territory and everyone that worked there will tell you first match, 15 to 20 minutes, no punching or kicking. That was the rule, period. Well, in six months, you could learn how to wrestle because you had to. You didn't have the option of brawling. It was not an option. A lot of nights you would go 20-minute broadways, which is through going through the time limit, you know, time limit draw. What a learning experience that was. And for being my first territory, Man, it couldn't have came at a bigger time. And then you go to a place like Tennessee and you learn showbiz. And we used to call it Tennessee high spots. You know, some people use it as a negative. I always looked at it as being a positive because it was so entertaining and it was different from anything I'd seen. I did not work there. I just saw some of the guys that had been there and their style of work. And it was different, had a different layer to it. But I would say, uh, if you got elevated after your second territory, kind of, and then you were able to go for a year in a territory where you're working with top guys, the key to this whole thing, the key to our business, it's a real simple rule, working with somebody better than you every night. That's how you get better. 
If you work with somebody at the same skill level or below, you're not going to get better. You've got to be in there with somebody better than you. So that was kind of the criteria that I looked at. And again, you got to look at the time frame. If you're going to draw money, there's a big difference in working for a territory that don't have the access or the opportunity or the capability of doing WWE-esque vignettes on you. I mean, when it used to be, if you had your talent skill level down and you were ready for to be that in that top spot, for them to bring you in and do six or eight weeks of vignettes on you, you were a star walking in the door. As soon as you parted the curtain, they knew who you were. They knew if they liked you or not already, and they had an impression on you. The smaller companies that didn't have those capabilities to do those world-class vignettes like a Pensacola territory or no budget, then it was, you know, you had less star power, you know, less tools to help you get over. So everything is, is variable, I think, depending on which territory and exactly what year we're talking about. But I would say five years, and if you have all the trappings and all the vehicles, you know, they made me an Anderson when I walked in the door and, and uh, for Jim Crockett Promotions, you know, they didn't have a bunch of vignettes on me. But when I walked in and they said, this is an Anderson, it was an immediate launching pad and advantage that I had over a lot of people just walking in the door. So, well, long, an long answer, I know. No, 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 we like that. That's what we're here for. Let's talk about your old pal, Matt Hardy. On October 14th, Matt Hardy is granted his release after trying for a release for some time. He said in an interview that it was harder to get his release than it was to get hired. And uh, Hardy said he could finally reinvent himself. And of course, we know eventually, a few years later, he would do that with the broken Matt Hardy character, it does feel like over time, for whatever reason, the WWE has not really known what to do with Matt Hardy. Why do you think that is? Well, I don't think Matt Hardy will ever be a quote heel because my God, they were babies probably when they first did their first television, you know, for WWF at the time they started so young. And the audience actually grew up with the Hardys. They saw the evolution of the Hardys. They were there from the very beginning. And, and when you spend that much time with a couple of guys who are, you know, they're endearing. They have that endearing quality. Jeff Hardy is, you know, he was a high flyer before high flying was fashionable. You know, he did all the, you know, the, the crazy stuff way back when which separated him out. You know, Matt was a part of that as well. Uh, but I just think that uh, when you grow up with somebody, you get comfortable with them. You know how they are. And, you know, being from North Carolina, they're Southern boys, which means they're gentlemen. They just have that easy, you know, cool, easy swagger about them. And I think by growing up with the audience, the audience is just used to them and, that's who they are to the audience. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.